Hey everyone, what's going on? Figured I'd finally make a video talking about the Golden State Warriors winning the NBA Finals this year, and how it's linked up to this narrative I've been following since 2015 with the movie Teen Wolf and the Minnesota Timberwolves. And in 2015, Andrew Wiggins, that now plays for the Golden State Warriors, he used to be a teenager playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And also Zach Levine, the player for the Chicago Bulls, also was a teen Minnesota Timberwolf. And that was the same year that Kevin Garnett got traded back to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And of course, the Kevin Garnett was the original teen basketball player for the Minnesota Timberwolves, all about the movie Teen Wolf. And of course, also think about how Kevin Garnett left the Minnesota Timberwolves to go play for the Boston Celtics. And then he won, you know, a championship with the Boston Celtics. But I know I didn't make a whole lot of videos talking about this. But if you go look at my blog, I was following the Golden State Warriors since about the beginning of January. And I definitely knew there was this pattern was being used or it existed again when they announced that Andrew Wiggins was going to be a starter for the first time in the NBA All-Star game. And on that same day, the Golden State Warriors, his team now, just so happened to play the Minnesota Timberwolves. And this is also something I'm trying to, to reiterate to people in the Gematria community, because a lot of people, you know, were following the Golden State Warriors because the Golden State Warriors and the Celtics played each other on Pope Francis's birthday. Of course, Pope Francis is the first Jesuit Pope, and everybody likes to connect everything to the Jesuits and follow the pattern and then blame everything on the Jesuits. And while I agree that pattern does exist, you know, it doesn't necessarily prove that the Jesuits are responsible. And I'm following this pattern with the movie Teen Wolf, and, you know, I we got the same result, right? I followed a whole different thing, had nothing to do with the Jesuits, nothing to do with a cabal, the Freemasons, anything. And it even involved the same numbers, but yet, you know, I never connected it to that. And that's something I just want people to understand. It's not that I don't think there is some type of cabal that exists and is using this knowledge and whatever. It's just, it's very obvious. But the Gematria connections do not always prove what you think it proves, if that makes sense. It's a different path to understand the infinity. It's basically, you're using, you know, Kabbalah. You're following a path and you're using the Jesuits to understand this a certain pattern and I'm following a whole different path and think about how in Kabbalah there's 22 different paths you know so I just want to reiterate that you know and it's once again people always think that I'm saying that I don't think that the Catholic Church or whatever is has anything to do with this but that's not the case I really do think there is a cabal but I just I see that gematria doesn't necessarily prove the things that people wanted to prove all of the time, you know, and I just feel obligated to share this with other people because at one point I th thought the same thing that they thought with the knowledge, right? And I'm trying to show people this bigger thing. And I've been doing this for a really long time, showing how patterns in my life sync up to the media and so on. You know, there, there's a lot more to be gained from this knowledge and it's, it's not all just about the Jesuits and the Freemasons and whatever and point taken is that a lot of people like I said they thought it was the Warriors and the Celtics because they played on Pope Francis's birthday he's the first Jesuit Pope of course a big number in the with the Jesuits is 56 right the Jesuits are called Society of Jesus it equals 56 the commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver, actually missed games five and six of the NBA finals, right? So most people are going to say that means Society of Jesus. And I agree that pattern, you know, it exists. It's concrete. But the pattern that I was following also connected to the number 56, such as the word wolf equals 56, such as how Kevin Garnett equals 56, right? And... A whole bunch of stuff, you know, Kevin Garnett, his uh, his rookie season when he was a Minnesota teen Timberwolf, a teen wolf, they, what are they, 
they lost 56 games, right? And in 2015, when he got traded back to the Minnesota Timberwolves, his first game back was on the 56th day of the year, and he got traded for Thaddeus Young, and Thaddeus Young equals 56. But look how the word Wolf equals 56, and Michael J. Fox equals 56, and Michael J. Fox's character in the movie is Scott Howard, and his name equals 56, right? You don't have to connect it to the Jesuits. I'm like, look at this. This connects to my Teen Wolf narrative, right? And once again, you just keep following the patterns, and all these things link up to the, the movie Teen Wolf. But once again, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the movie Teen Wolf was responsible. It's just a, a pattern, a path that I understood to see this narrative that existed, right? And further proof is when the NBA Finals began, there was a mainstream media article on C it Ed about Michael J. Fox and his Parkinson's disease. It's like, what are the odds? Michael J. Fox, they put him, you know... A headline story and when the NBA finals are going on and I'm talking about how it's linked up to the movie Teen Wolf. But anyway, let me go back. I want to re-explain some things about why this Teen Wolf narrative began in 2015. And I kind of want to build up to make you understand why I thought it was important to this year. And, you know, I mean, look at all these videos. I have like tons of videos on the movie Teen Wolf and how it's linked up and it was even linked up to the Super Bowl this year with the Rams being in the Super Bowl and Joe Burrow who went to, who, Nebraska, he got snubbed by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And if you watch the movie Teen Wolf, the movie has a bunch of Nebraska Cornhusker stuff all throughout the movie. It has a Nebraska bumper sticker in the coach's office, a Nebraska license plate, a Nebraska Cornhusker calendar at the Teen Wolf's house. And there's palm trees in the movie, so you're like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. There's no palm trees in Nebraska. You know, but they put all this Nebraska Cornhusker stuff within that movie. So, just think about Joe Burrow, the Rams, and the, Nebraska's also important to Moses and Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln supposedly freed the slaves. Moses freed the slaves. Moses brought in the Age of Aries, which is a ram. Nebraska plays in the Sea of Red right? Moses parted the Red Sea. A whole lot of interesting connections to Nebraska and how it links up to the Rams. Some stuff I've been following, it's for another time. But what I noticed in 2015 was the NBA All-Star Week that year. The It began on the date February 13th and it ended on the date February 15th. And this was interesting because these dates are the dates of the Roman Wolf Festival called Lupercalia, right? And on February 13th that year in 2015, Andrew Wiggins, who was a teen Minnesota Timberwolf, he was the MVP of the Rising Stars Challenge. And then the next night on Valentine's Day, his teammate Zach Levine, it, he was also a teen Minnesota Timberwolf at the time. And think about how this is going on during the time of Lupercalia, the Wolf Festival. But Zach Levine, he won the slam dunk contest on Valentine's Day that night. And he also did a dunk where he wore the Michael Jordan Space Jam jersey. And I noticed that Zach Levine played for the college UCLA, right? He played for UCLA. And... Andrew Wiggins, he got traded for Kevin Love. That's why he was a Minnesota Timberwolf. So he originally played for the Cavaliers and got traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves for Kevin Love. And Kevin Love also played at college at UCLA. So Zach Levine, Kevin Love. The very next night on the actual All-Star game, Russell Westbrook was the MVP of the All-Star game. And Russell Westbrook also played college at UCLA. So I looked up the leading scorer for UCLA on Valentine's Day, and it just so happened to be the player Kevon Looney, right? And I'm thinking, what are the odds? Kevon Looney? And I'm talking about how Zach Levine did the dunk wearing a Space Jam jersey, Looney Tunes Space Jam. And also on Valentine's Day that year, the player Denzel Valentine from Michigan State, he hit a game winner to win the game for Michigan State on Valentine's Day. Denzel Valentine hits the game winner for Michigan State, and I thought, this can't be a coincidence. So, I then watched the movie Teen Wolf, and I noticed all that Nebraska Cornhusker stuff in the background, and as I read further about the movie Teen Wolf, it talked about how the, the mascot in the movie, 
is a beaver, right? The basketball team, their mascot is a beaver, and it's based off of the Oregon State Beavers. And I was like, what are the odds of this? Because the Nebraska football team had just signed a new coach named Mike Riley, and he came from Oregon State. And I was like, this this is just too ridiculous to be true. The new coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers is Mike Riley, who came from Oregon State, which is the Beavers, which is what the mascot of the movie Teed Wolf is based off of. And would you believe that next season or whatever, like in that year, 2015, Nebraska had a terrible season, and they ended up playing UCLA in the Foster Farms Bowl. And it, uh, the Foster Farms Bowl was in Levi's Stadium even, right? It was in Levi's Stadium in San Francisco. Of course, Moses was in the tribe of Levi, which is another connection to Nebraska and Moses and so on. And a few weeks after this, then we got, or it wasn't even a few weeks. It was because it was on the 56th day. So a week later or something, we got the news that Kevin Garnett was going to be traded back to the Minnesota Timberwolves, right? And Kevin Garnett was the original Minnesota teen Timberwolf. I was like this, you know, during the Wolf Festival of Lupercalia, they have, you know, the teen wolf win the Rising Star Challenge, Andrew Wiggins, then Slam dunk contest is won by the Teen Wolf, Zach Levine. And then now the the Timberwolves are going to be getting back the original Teen Wolf. And then his first game back is on the 56th day of the year, and his name equals 56, and he was traded for Thaddeus Young, who equals 56. I mean, you just couldn't make this up. There was a whole bunch of other things that were connected to this narrative later in that year, because this was the year 2015. And then when the 2015-2016 NBA season began... We got the announcement that Kevin Garnett was going to retire after that season. It was going to be his final season. And then the Los Angeles Lakers ended up opening up the season against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And just before that season opener, the, the Minnesota Timberwolves coach, Flip Saunders, had died. And Flip Saunders, his birthday just so happened to be the same day as Andrew Wiggins' birthday. And then, of course, a month later, Kobe Bryant then announced his retirement, right? And the whole season was all scripted around Kobe Bryant and so on. But if you look up the movie Teen Wolf, the movie Teen Wolf just so happened to come out on Kobe Bryant's birthday, August 23rd, 1985. I just want to point it out really quick, which is also Vulcanalia, which, you know, the god of fire and volcanoes. And maybe I'll get into that a little bit later, but, you know, it's just interesting. It was on Kobe Bryant's birthday. The Lakers and Kobe Bryant open up the season against the Minnesota Timberwolves just after their coach Flip Saunders has di- had died, and Kevin Garnett had announced that he was retiring as well after that season. Of course, Kobe Bryant was also a teenager when he came into the NBA as well, just like Kevin Garnett, and just before that season began, we also had the deaths of Moses Malone and Daryl Dawkins, and they were both known for playing in the league's when they were teenagers. I believe it was Moses Malone was the first player teenager to play in the ABA, and Daryl Dawkins was the first teenager to play in the NBA. Then we had the Kevin Garnett, who was a teenager and a teen wolf, who announced his retirement. Then we had Kobe Bryant, who came into the league as a teenager and later announced his retirement after all these wolf connections to Kobe Bryant and so on. So then... Along with this Teen Wolf narrative, there was also another narrative that involved Michael Jordan. And think about Zach Levine doing the, winning the slam dunk contest and he wore the Space Jam jersey. Think about Michael Jordan and Space Jam and so on. But he did that on Valentine's Day. And I was talking about this big theme with Valentine's Day and love and how it connected to Michael Jordan. And... There was also tons of stories after that, all about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was connected to the Kentucky Derby that year. I even predicted that Jordan Spieth would win the Masters that year because his name was Jordan and a whole lot more. But that was on Valentine's Day when he did that Space Jam dunk. And also think about all the stuff with the Bulls. The Chicago Bulls that year, their their star player was Derek Rose, right? Think about a Rose in relation to Valentine's Day. Andrew Wiggins was traded for Kevin Love, right? And then you had like Denzel Valentine hit the game winner on Valentine's Day. And Zach Levine, his name even sounds like loving, kind of. 
And also Kevin Hart, he was the MVP of the celebrity game that year. So there was a whole bunch of stuff that was kind of related to a love Valentine's theme synced up to Michael Jordan. And when you look at Michael Jordan, you know, after he came out of retirement, he wore the number 45, which is interesting because Valentine's Day just so happens to be on the 45th day of the year. And if you look at Michael Jordan and his numbers, he also wore the number 12. And he wore the number 12 for one game ever. And that's because somebody supposedly stole his jersey on Valentine's Day. I think it was in 1991. So Michael Jordan wore the number 12, the number 23, and the number 45 in his career. And the reason he wore the number 12 was because someone stole his jersey on Valentine's Day. And then he wears the number 45, and Valentine's Day is the 45th day of the year. So I knew there was a connection to the Bulls and Valentine's Day. And the Warriors were having a pretty good season that year. And just before that All-Star game, I noticed that they lost back-to-back -back games, which they hadn't done that season. And they lost to the Bulls, and then they also lost to the Utah Jazz. And once again, think about the Bulls and think about Michael Jordan, who won his the flu game and so on against the Utah Jazz. So I was like, there must be some type of connection to the Golden State Warriors that year. So I was following the Warriors, and then 122 days after Valentine's Day, the Golden State Warriors ended up winning the NBA Finals on 6-1-6. And of course, in Gematria, Golden State equals 122. So they won 122 days after Valentine's Day. Golden State equals 122. Michael Jordan is also interesting because the capital of the country, Jordan, used to be called Philadelphia until the year 106 AD, and it was destroyed by earthquakes. And uh, I'm bringing that up because the Warriors had originally played from Philadelphia, right? Michael Jordan's final game was also in Philadelphia when he played for the Warriors. You know, so the, you know, the Warriors had this connection to Philadelphia. So I, I just knew there was something important. And think about how they won this year on 616 as well, right? The same day they won in 2015. Philadelphia is also the city of brotherly love, right? And think about that with that theme of Valentine's. Brotherly love, love, Valentine's, so on. Also, if you looked up Zach Levine, the player who did that Space Jam dunk, his birthday is March 10th of 1995. 3 10, 1995. This just so happens to be the exact same day that Michael Jordan retired from baseball. So it was like, what are the odds this guy's born on the exact day that Michael Jordan retired from baseball? And what are the odds that later the Chicago Bulls would trade for, or whatever they would pick up? I don't know if they traded or if he just signed with them or what, but Zach Levine became the star player for the Chicago Bulls. And further, what are the odds that in 2016 in the NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls drafted Denzel Valentine of all players, right? The guy who made the game winner on Valentine's Day that year got drafted to the Chicago Bulls. And they gave him the number 45, like Michael Jordan's old number. Like how Valentine's is the 45th day of the year, you know? And what are the odds that Kevon Looney, Looney Tunes, and the guy who's the leading scorer for UCLA on Valentine's Day that year, he got drafted to the Golden State Warriors just after they won the 2015 NBA Finals. It's like, what are the odds that he would go there? Looney Tunes, Gavon Looney. Kevin Love also wore the number zero, and he played for the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? And the Monstars in the movie Space Jam were the number zero. That was another big thing why I thought the Golden State Warriors would beat the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2015. Because it was linked up to Space Jam and the Monstars. And, of course, this year, thinking about Andrew Wiggins being really important to this narrative, and Andrew Wiggins wore the number 22, and it's the 22 season, and Boston equals 22, who they played in the NBA Finals. It makes me think about Space Jam again, because Bill Murray, the actor, he wears the number 22 in that film. Think about how golf, this is another reason why Jordan Spieth was important in 2015 with the Masters, because Space Jam starts off on the golf course, right? And then they suck him to the whatever the tune world and the golf course and he's golfing with bill murray right but bill murray when he comes in he wears the number 22 jersey so just something interesting to think about with with bill murray there, there's a whole lot of stuff that i've followed with him over the years but 
golf also equals 22 in gematria and basketball also equals 22 in gematria so it makes sense why they would combine them two sports together in that film i think so now that i kind of got you up to par on the origins of this theme that i have been following you know i have a ton of videos you can search teen wolf I know I have a playlist on Michael Jordan and a bunch of stuff that I've talked about a lot of this narrative with over the years, but you can go back and watch them and look for them if you want. I'll try to find some and put them in the description. But last season in the NBA in 2021, in April, we got the death of the dad on Teen Wolf. The guy who plays the dad on Teen Wolf, can't think of what his name is right now, but James Hampton. He ended up dying on April 7th last year. And then a few days later, there was this Dante Wright shooting in Minneapolis, or it was in Brooklyn, Minnesota, and then they canceled the Brooklyn Nets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves game the next day because of the shooting. But the day of this shooting, it just so happened to be the Chicago Bulls playing the Minnesota Timberwolves, the day of this shooting. So I was like, huh, what are the odds? There's the team Wolf dad dies, then... The Chicago Bulls are playing the Minnesota Timberwolves when there's this big shooting that's going on. You also had Carl Anthony Towns, who was the leading scorer of that game. And Carl Anthony Towns at one time was a Minnesota teen Timberwolf. And believe it or not, his birthday is the same day that the movie Space Jam came out in history. And also, the name Dante, it just makes me think of Dante's Peak, right? The movie Dante's Peak about volcano eruptions. and you know, think about how Teen Wolf came out on Vulcanalia, the god of volcanoes, which is also Kobe Bryant's birthday. But whatever, we had this shooting, the Teen Wolf dad dies, then we have this shooting where the Bulls are playing, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Then a few days later, Zach Levine actually went into the health and safety protocols. If I can find it here, I'll pull it up really quick. But Zach Levine, he, he, uh, they thought he might have had coronavirus, and then he couldn't finish out the season or whatever. Then the Bulls ended up not even making the playoffs, and so on. But we then got the death of Scottie Pippen's son, right? And they reported Scottie Pippen's son dead on April 19th, which is the first day of Taurus. And Taurus, of course, in ast astrology is the bull, right? Taurus, the bull. This was also a Chinese ox year, and ox is a castrated bull. So what are the odds that Scottie Pippen's son would die on the first day of the bull in astrology during a Chinese ox year that's also related to the bull symbolism? And on this very same day, there was a story about how Kobe Bryant's estate wasn't going to renew its partnership with Nike, right? And Nike is interesting because in mythology, Nike is the goddess who slays the bull, right? So it's like, you know, Kobe Bryant's, they don't side with Nike. And then, you know, Nike is who slays the bull. Think about the Chicago Bulls. Think about Scottie Pippen, the Chicago Bull, whose son, who was reported dead on that same day, the first day of Taurus. And, of course, Steph Curry was in the news that day. He had, like, a 49-point game. He beat Philadelphia, of all teams, right? The team Michael Jordan retired against. And then I realized that the 21-22 season on – April 13th, that was going to be the 23rd anniversary of Michael Jordan uh, retiring, right? Think about how Michael Jordan wore the number 23 mostly. That was he's mainly known for. And that was the 23rd anniversary of him retiring from the Chicago Bulls. So I was like, oh, maybe we should watch the Chicago Bulls for this next season last year. And at least for symbolism, right? Because they have Zach Levine. Denzel Valentine had also played there. They even had Thaddeus Young at one point, the guy who Kevin Garnett was traded for, you know, in the 2015 Wolf narrative. Then, you know, over the summer or whatever, the Lakers signed DeMar DeRozan, or not the Lakers, the Bulls. And the Bulls were having a hell of a season, right? All up until about January, right after the 23rd anniversary of Michael Jordan retiring from the Bulls you know, wearing the number 23 and so on. And just after that, Zach Levine, he got injured in the game. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can pull it up. But Zach Levine, 
it was this game right here. Like, he only played three minutes and 32 seconds because he got injured in the game against the, uh, the Golden State Warriors. What are the odds of that? Zach Levine, the Space Jam dunk guy. The Teen Wolf, he got injured against the Golden State Warriors right after the 23rd anniversary, like the next day after the 23rd anniversary of Michael Jordan retiring for the Bulls. So I was following this narrative, and he gets injured against the Golden State Warriors, and then they just pretty much start having a terrible season after that, right? And I just noticed recently, too, the next game was against Boston of all teams, you know, Golden State, and then the next game he didn't play against was Boston. And notice how he got injured 310 days after his birthday that was on the date 310, the same day Michael Jordan retired from baseball in history. But another reason why I was following the Warriors then was because it, right at the very end of the year, we got this story about this Boston Celtic player named Sam Jones who died on LeBron James' birthday. And we also had the story about, right, I mean, I think it was the same day or the day before or, or you know, right in the same general area, we had the story about Rajon Rondo from the Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron James and how he was going to get traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron's old team. And then think about Andrew Wiggins and the, you know, how he was originally from Cleveland and he went to the Warriors. But in the trade that involved Rajon Rondo, it also involved Denzel Valentine. So I knew there was some type of relationship to this Teen Wolf narrative that I was following. And of course, you know, the Sam Jones Bostic Celtics player, he died like six months and six days after his birthday. And he died on LeBron James's birthday and LeBron 66, LeBron James equals 66, Lakers equals 66, you know. You know, it was on LeBron's 37th birthday. The next day, LeBron James scored 37 points in the game against the Grizzlies and Los Angeles equals 37. And... Teen Wolf also equals 37 in Gematria. And Chicago also equals 37. Bulls equals 66. So Lakers, Chicago have this relationship, right? And I was looking at Sam Jones and it said that he was born in Wilmington, North Carolina. And that's interesting because that's where Michael Jordan went to high school. So I was like, huh. Once again, there has to be this connection to this narrative that I'm following. It's synced up to Michael Jordan now. Think about LeBron James and Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and the, the talk of the GOAT narrative and so on. And then Rajon Rondo, originally they said he was being traded for Denzel Valentine, but it was in like the mix of a trade when it eventually happened. But, you know, Denzel Valentine was the player who wore number 45 and he got drafted to the Chicago Bulls. And Valentine's Day is the 45th day of the year. This, uh... When they announced this trade, it was also 45 days after his birthday, right? So his day, his birthday, 45 days after his birthday, Valentine's Day on the 45th day of the year. So it was also 45 days before Valentine's Day, I believe, right? Maybe not, but I point out Teen Wolf equals 37. Think about Rajon Rondo, too. He played for the Boston Celtics, right? He played with Kevin Garnett. And the Boston Celtics, Kevin Garnett, the original Teen Wolf, and then Sam Jones, the Boston Celtic. And I never really put that together, that it was connected to the Celtics, but I knew it was connected to the Teen Wolf narrative that was important to the Warriors. But looking back on all this, I'm going, huh, it was important to Sam Jones, the Celtic player. It was important to Kevin Garnett playing with Rajon Rondo for the Boston Celtics. Then uh, just now I'm seeing that Zach Levine, I knew he was injured against the Warriors, but I didn't realize the very next game was against the Boston Celtics, you know? So I was like, man, it was like, it was all right there. Just never paid enough attention, I guess. But, you know, I went on to talk about a whole bunch of other stuff, such as how the the Lakers' 37th game of the season after that Sam Jones guy died uh, was on New Year's Eve against Portland, who equals 37. And they're the team that played... The Lakers played right after Kobe Bryant died, right? Rip City, but it's also uh, Rose City, right? Think about the love theme and all that. Derek Rose, Zach Levine, Kevin Love. Pointed out all of this stuff, you know. All linked back to the Teen Wolf narrative. And further, I just another thing I just realized was after Denzel Valentine got traded... 
Denzel Valentine, he got traded, what, to the Knicks in that trade with Rajon Rondo? But then, or he went to the Lakers, I think, and then they dropped him or something and whatever. But, well, where is it? Let me pull up Denzel Valentine on here. I know I read this somewhere. Denzel Valentine. He now plays for the Boston something. Or he plays for the Maine Celtics, right? So he went to the he went to the Lakers and whatever it was, they whatever team that he ended up getting traded to, they dropped him and then he signed like a short contract with the Jazz. And now he plays for the Maine Celtics, right? Let's see if I can see where it says it in here. January 21st, he was acquired by the Maine Celtics. So even Denzel Valentine had that connection to the Celtics that I never noticed until just the other day when I was looking at it. So then a few days after that trade, the Rajon Rondo trade and so on, I then realized that Andrew Wiggins now played for the Golden State Warriors. And I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting that he plays for the Warriors. So I was like, I'm going to pay attention to the NBA All-Star game this year. And I noticed that the NBA All-Star game just so happened to be in Cleveland. And that was interesting because of the Rajon Rondo raid or trade. And he went to Cleveland and so on. And, you know, think about how Andrew Wiggins was traded from Cleveland to become a teen Minnesota Timberwolf, right, With for Kevin Love. So I was like, huh. Once again, it has to be connected to this teen wolf narrative. Wiggins playing for the Warriors. Then a few days later, we got, or a couple weeks later, we found out that Andrew Wiggins was going to be the first time starter for the all-star game. And it was on the same day that the Warriors just so happened to play the Minnesota Timberwolves. So you knew it was connected yet again to this teen wolf narrative. And, you know, Zach Levine was also in the all-star game too. I remember how he got snubbed like all them years. And then I think it was last year, just before the guy on team, the dad on teen wolf died that Zach Levine made his first ever all-star game appearance. Right. And, you know, I talked about all kinds of stuff here. The dad on Teen Wolf died two months, two days before Michael J. Fox's birthday. Andrew Wiggins equals 198, like Teen Wolf. Like Scott Howard, the name of the Teen Wolf in the movie. Like Lupercalia, which is the wolf festival that they were Teen Wolves over the All-Star Week or whatever. Plus Teen Wolf's 116, Teen Wolf's 116. And anyway, I was watching for the the slam dunk contest and the rising star challenge and the MVP of the rising stars challenge was this guy, Cade Cunningham. And interesting, you, you know, if you look at this guy in Gematria, Cade Cunningham, I actually know a kid named Cade Cunningham too. And I bet you it's connected to him because I DJed for his graduation last summer, which, or we had a band gig for his graduation. So it's interesting, but Notice how his name equals 117, just like how Golden State Warriors equal 117. So that was interesting, you know. And then it was in Cleveland and so on. And the winner of the slam dunk contest was Obi Toppin, or however you say that guy's name. And and Carl Anthony Towns won the three-point contest too, right? The Minnesota Timberwolf, who was at one point for a very small amount of time. 18 Minnesota Timberwolf is Obi Toppin, or however you pronounce this guy's name, right? And his name equaled, I think, 116, like Teen Wolf. I'll put it in here to make sure. Obi Toppin, 116, you know, just like how Teen Wolf equals 116. So I knew there was a relationship here. I was like, yep, it's got to be connected to this. It's interesting just talking about this, too, because yesterday I got a... <laughs> Yesterday in the mail, we got like a, a package of panties in the mail. And I didn't know that's what it was. And my girlfriend, it was from a girl named like Jessica Toppin. And uh, who knows? I, I wouldn't go on this. But my girlfriend like handed it to me and wanted me to deliver it to the right address. And then I couldn't figure out exactly where she lives. So I was Google mapping it on my drive to, to Denison to get Subway. And then I was like, I wonder what this is. And I Googled it. And I was like, I got to deliver panties to some girl's house. This is going to be awesome. You know, it's like awkward as hell, but I never ended up taking them there yet. But uh, I don't know. It's just funny. Her name is Toppin. And then last night I took a screenshot because there was a headline article on CNN with something to do with Toppin. 
So I, I don't know. I have synchronicity all the time, so I can't even keep up with it. I, w I went to the store this morning when I got up, and I saw this girl walking her dog. And she hangs out with my old uh, sixth grade teacher, Mr. Brooding. And I started thinking about how he's like in his 50s now. Because I saw him at the bar like a couple weeks back and whatever. But uh, I was just thinking about him randomly because this girl was walking her dogs and she hangs out with him sometimes. And I pull into the grocery store and my teacher, Mr. Bruning, is like in his truck, like leaving the grocery store. And I'm like, you know, what are the odds of I'm thinking about my teacher? And then all of a sudden, like, I randomly see my teacher and I don't even see him that often. So very weird. But anyway, you get the point, right? The All-Star Week, the Slam Dunk Contest with Sync the Teen Wolf. and the Rising Star Challenge guy even had the same chibatria as Golden State Warriors. And then, like, a month after that, I blogged about it on March 25th, we got the story that Kobe Bryant's estate reaches a new long-term deal with Nike, of all things, right? The same narrative that it goes back to. Like, you know, Nike slayed the Bulls, Scotty Pippen, Zach Levine was in the COVID protocols at that time last year, talked about the Warriors... There was other things that made me think of the Warriors, too, such as the train wreck symbolism. And we just got the Philadelphia train wreck from 2015 that was linked to the Golden State Warriors winning the finals. And they just, uh, what was it, the Brandon Boston guy, they finally found him not guilty of his of wrecking the train and so on. It, just before, it was in March, like March 4th. I think it was the same day that the Batman movie came out. But... Uh, yeah, that was all linked to the Warriors. And then what are the odds? They Seven years later, they come out with a story about, you know, the engineer of the train being found not guilty and so on. It's like, you, you can't think they would have did that beforehand, you know. But a lot of things pointing to the Warriors, it seemed. Even their colors were the same colors as the Rams colors, the same colors as Ukraine's colors. And I can't even think of that in WNBA player, the girl that's in Ukraine or whatever. Well, I can't think of what her name is, but she was like in the WNBA finals against the team that had the same color the year, like in 2021 or whatever. So, and you know, the bull symbolism also links up to Moses. And once again, Moses and the teen wolf and all that stuff in Nebraska, because remember when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he was mad about the golden calf people worshiping the golden calf. Well, Moses brought in the age of Aries, which is the ram, and people worshiping the calf that was worshiping the age of Taurus, the bull, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things that are all linked up to this, but in March, we got the story that Kobe Bryant's estate had reached a new deal with Nike. And I'm trying to think what I wrote in here. I wrote all kinds of stuff. Oh, that same day that they signed a contract with Nike, Zion Williamson was in the news, and he was wearing his new shoe called the Zion 2. And he hadn't played all season, right? But he was, he, uh, maybe it wasn't the same day, but it was right around the same time Zion Williamson was in the news dunking or whatever, because he hadn't played all year, blah, blah, blah. And but he, people pointed out he was wearing his new shoe called the Zion 2. And this was interesting. Think about, you know, Kobe Bryant signing with Nike and so on. But if you go back to this old post here where I was talking about Kobe's not signing with Nike and how it was linked up to Scottie Pippen's son, I also mentioned Zion Williamson and how he blew out his shoe on Michael Jordan. Or he blew out his shoe. I can't even remember it all. Didn't he blow out his shoe? Who did he even play for? Duke? Yeah. He blew out his shoe against North Carolina in college. And that was Michael Jordan's old team. And then later he signed a shoe deal with Michael Jordan and so on. But it was linked up to that movie, Like Mike, and the main kid's name is Ox. And Ox is a castrated bull. and Or not the main kid, but the, the bully kid in the movie. A whole lot more. I'll, maybe I'll find some links. And Moral of the story is, you know, Zion's sh shoe blowing out was linked up to Michael Jordan. And then Zion signed with Jordan Brand. And if you go back to this... When Kobe wouldn't sign, the very next day, Zion Williamson released his Zion 1 shoe or whatever. So I knew that was important to Zion Williamson. And then Zion Williamson debuted his new shoe against the Nets the very next day, right? So I was like, what are the odds of that? 
And he unveiled the new shoe on, uh, I'm pretty sure that when he unveiled, when he signed with Michael Jordan, Jordan brand shoe, it was on the same day that Michael Jordan's father died in history. But I'm going to leave it there because my kids are, they won't, they're not going to leave me alone to keep finishing this video, I don't think. So, uh, and I started it like a few days ago and it just, stuff comes up, but there is some other interesting things that are going on with with some of this stuff, such as like, I, I mean, if you've been following my blog, I've been talking about a lot about a dream theme like no other and how it was linked up to that train symbolism. And <clears throat> I even talked about how, you know, Nelly was important to that. And then Nelly's, the dancer in the Nelly's Hot in Here video had died on June 4th. And I talked about how Bon Jovi was linked up to that. And it all had to do with the date 310, which is Zach Levine's birthday too, right? And Michael Jordan, today, Michael Jordan retired from baseball. So there's probably some interrelationship into the baseball season with all that, but the, oh, I don't even know what, where I was going with this. Oh, but then the Bon Jovi guy died too, the bassist, I think, for Bon Jovi. He also died on 6-4, right? This big day I was following with the train symbolism, and it all had to do with a dream narrative as well, and I was looking up the, on Valentine's Day, I noticed the Golden State Warriors played the Los Angeles Clippers and the leading scorer for the Clippers is a guy named Terrence Mann. And think about the movie Field of Dreams that, you know, he takes Terrence Mann to go see the Boston Celtics or the Boston Red Sox game or whatever. And then they flash 1922, uh, the World Series was the giant New York Giants versus the New York Yankees, right? And that's how you knew it was the same city World Series. In 1989, because Field of Dreams came out in 89, it was the Oakland Athletics versus San Francisco Giants in the World Series. And at that game where he takes Terrence Mann, it's the Red Sox versus the Oakland Athletics. And, you know, Kevin Costner equals the same as Athletics, and that was the Earthquake World Series. But that was the same city World Series. And when they flashed Moonlight Graham 1922, that was also a same city World Series. And he takes Terrence Mann there. And it was in the year 1922. So it's just interesting thinking about how now it's 100 years later. You know, so. I don't know. But Terrence Mann. That, is, that cannot be a coincidence. And it's synced up to that dream theme. Which is also, you know, feel the dreams equals 117. Think about how James Earl Jones is Terrence Mann. And he's born on January 17th. And think about Michael J. Fox and Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease equals 117. So there, there's definitely a, I know there is some type of odd connection there. You know, the Mets and the Yankees are playing very well. And in 2015, that train symbolism had a lot to do with the movie Trainwreck, where it was all about the Mets. And then the Mets were in the World Series that year, the 111th World Series. And they lost to Kansas City, who equals 122, just like how Golden State equals 122. And New York Mets equal 168, just how like, how Cleveland Cavaliers, who lost the NBA Finals, equal 168. So it makes me wonder if it's connected to that narrative with the Yankees and the Mets and Subway Series and the train symbolism. But I don't know. It could be important to the Red Sox as well because he takes Terrence Mann to the Red Sox game. So I got a lot to think about here. But I just can't believe that guy's name is Terrence Mann, you know. And I've been following this big dream fee, but it was related to the Gold State Warriors. You also had this, I don't know if you're, if you're following my uh, NASCAR narrative with the volcano symbolism and how it linked up to Prince Philip dying and a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of it had to do with four, the date 425 when Talladega was held last year, and that's Adam Silver's birthday. And then think about Adam Silver missing game five and game six of the finals. And, you know, think about how Teen Wolf came out on Vulcanilia. And then that his birthday is important to that, the volcano symbolism that I was following. Even at Talladega, you get the Vulcan trophy when you win. So, I don't know. There seems like there's something important to volcanoes with all this as well. And I, I'm wondering, you know, Zach Levine also played in Seattle. I've been following, uh, you know, Mount St. Helens a lot. Zach Levine. Pretty sure he's from the Seattle area. Renton, yeah. UCLA. So yeah, well, 
I will keep paying attention to this narrative. Hopefully I can make some more uh, videos and so on. But it makes me wonder, too, how the UCLA is the Bruins. And, uh, you know, I'm talking about Happy Gilmore recently and how Adam Sandler's movie Hustle is synced to the number 22. And Happy Gilmore's favorite, you know, he wears the Warriors jersey in the beginning of the film. But then a lot of the film he's wearing that Boston Bruins jersey. So... We will see, but once again, now my kids, I feel like they're going to leave me alone, but I'm just going to end the video there because I have a feeling they're going to come in here in about 10 seconds. So have a good one. Peace.